Well, let's let's kick it off, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Albert Violet and Ray. Give me a hell yeah! Heck yeah! So, so Albert, my first question is: How did you first meet Max and link up and and become the vocalist of this project? Um, so they were actually so Garrett and Max or Max started the band. I don't even remember when he started a long ass time ago. Um. He recently reignited it with the album that just came out in 2019, I believe. And then COVID ruined everything as it did for everyone. And then he restarted it again with Garrett. And they went on uh, the DWP show with Bobby and Jake and all them. And they did a, a show called The Vocalist. And I actually saw Max posting about it on Facebook because I've been friends with him for a while. And I just tried out and I got in, which was crazy. I never thought I was going to make it. So it was literally like a Facebook entry contest that you just happened to win the whole thing? It was like, so it was like he posted on Facebook letting everyone know and then you would like send your like, uh, they would send me like a demo and I wrote to it. And then they premiered it on the DWP uh, Twitch stream. And they had all these people trying out live. And then uh, out of everyone that tried out, there was like hundreds of people, I got it. So it was just really cool. That is really, really cool. Hell yeah. Uh, Albert, my co-host today is is JB. He goes by JB Music Six Six One on on just all the networks. JB, what's the question you have for Albert? Yeah, Albert, thank you so much for being here. Really do appreciate you taking out the time and uh, putting it towards our our baby here, our stream. <laughs> With that being said, brother, is there any anything that we wouldn't expect you um, to have as a hobby? What do you like going, you know, shopping or you know, yada yada? Um, I'm trying to think of like a weird hobby I have. I all I do is like music, uh, school and and video games. That's my life. What do you go to school uh, for? Uh, I go to school for graphic design, and I'm actually graduating in May. Hell yeah, so excellent. Anyone, excellent. Want to send me a gift? That's awesome. <laughs> so if you guys need any graphic work, hit up hit up Albert on on Facebook and uh, pay him some money, and he'll shoot you some yes. awesome graphics. Hell yeah. Please. We please actually may use your services for something. If that's cool. We, we, we always need graphics done for stuff. So hell yeah. Um, so, but you're, but you knew you're saying that you and Max were already Facebook friends before that. So like, you had interacted with him prior to the submission or was just Facebook friend relationship that grew into now we're touring together, blah, 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 blah. It was just Facebook. Like I never met him. I knew of, everyone knew of him. I knew of him. Um, I was in, so I'm in the AZ scene. He's from, they're from, New, uh, Nevada, mm -hmm. uh, Las Vegas. I almost said New Mexico for some reason. Like, I don't know where they live. But um, so, like, in the Arizona scene, I knew Craig. We played shows with Craig, Dead Rabbits, all that. Yeah. And so, but I didn't know Max. Like, I never had that, con like, it never connected the dots. And then after I tried out, it was just weird to know, like, how many mutual people we knew. And it was just, like, a small little community of, like, the same people. It, it was just strange to, like, realize that the music industry, like, in our genre is so small. That's cool so how it's that of, it works out sometimes. You yeah. said you said also uh, video games as a hobby. What are what are some of your favorite video games? I am so I play like a knockoff League of Legends called Smite. Okay, I've heard of it. It's, ah. I freaking love Smite. Like anyone, like anyone, add me on Steam and I'll just show you how to play Smite and I'll fucking wreck you. That's what I'll do. <laughs> Hell yeah, awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, did you bring hot sauce for later? I brought the hottest sauce I could find in my house, and I'm very, like, white boy. It's a Chipotle Cholula. <laughs> I mean, it'll work. It's better than nothing. We, we've, we've had people bring, like, Del Taco sauce, Taco Bell sauce, like, last second, and it all it all classifies as working. Um, cool. What, uh, what are some of the, the, the band's goals for 2023? What would you guys like to accomplish? Um, so we're just trying to, like, get out there, play more shows. After the Escape the Fate tour last year, uh, which we so went Bobby, to. We went to at the Whiskey Go. -Go. Oh, did you? Yeah, we were there. Oh, you guys killed. Awesome. It was awesome. We Maybe. didn't know. We didn't know each other. We weren't homies yet at the time, so we, we were like, uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, you guys, <laughs> you were awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so we're just trying to play shows. Um, we're playing Incarceration in July. I believe that's when that is. Um, we're we're trying to get uh, 
like management lined out, ironed out. We've been talking to a few people. We're just trying to get everything like in line so we can just go, like go, 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 and ha- stop having speed bumps. I got you. Is it? Sense. Were you were you in previous projects before VNB, or is this like your first full time frontman status job? Um, I was only ever in like local stuff. I was in a local band forever called Note to Self in Arizona, and then uh, that ended. And then like a year later, I joined Violent New Breed, which was kind of weird. So I've never had really a break from band life. Is that named after from first to last song? Um, I used to tell people it wasn't, but yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love from first to last. Me too. They it was look. funny too because on that our very first EP we released with uh for Note to Self, Matt Good is actually the producer on it. Really? So I had to exp- I had to like lie to Matt for like a week of like, no, this is not named after your song. And then <laughs> after I was like, yeah, it was after your song. <laughs> He's like, Son of a! <laughs> I knew it. Hell yeah. Right. Uh- yep. Talk to me about Ruination, which was the most recent single that you guys have. What what goes into the writing in that particular song? Um, That song, so Garrett actually sent me an idea, like a voice memo almost, of just his like raw guitar. And then I just like wrote to it at home, but just listened to it over and over and over and over. And then eventually I got like a solid like foundation for it. And then we went to LA to record it with uh, Hiram Hernandez and... It was, it was just like, so basically it was like Garrett put the skeleton down, I put the skeleton down for the melodies and lyrics, and then we all came together, Max and everyone, in the studio and like embellished everything there and built from there. Is it Garrett's birthday today? It is Garrett's birthday today. Happy yes. birthday, Garrett! Hell yeah! Wherever he may be. <laughs> I'm sure he's, what, he's in Nevada also probably right now? He lives in LA currently. Oh, okay. Happy birthday to Garrett. Yeah. Is is that um, how is that how a normal VNB song is starts? Is he kind of has like a skeleton that he sends around to you guys, or is it is that just for that one time song? How uh, that one came about? Yeah, usually it's like a pre proed out, like demoed out version from Garrett or Max. They both be like sending me skeletons and stuff, and then um, yeah, I just listen to it for days, or other way, or I send it back to him. And go, this sucks. Don't send that crap to me. <laughs> this but, one's whack. Uh, no. Yeah, just write for days, and then eventually I'll send them voice memos back, and then we'll take it to the studio. For sure. Uh, JB, yeah. what's uh, what's the next one you got for Albert? The next one I have uh, is how was working with Howard Jones on Bury Me? Um, so I actually wasn't on that album. That was a the there was a previous singer named Sean Russell. And right on. he was on the album. But uh, I, I just got a text from Max saying he's trying to join. Did you guys get that at all? No, it'll it'll do like a loud beep and we'll all hear it. Okay. He doesn't have to join Twitch or anything. He just has to click that link. If you Did you did you forward the link to him? Yeah, I did. Yeah, if he clicks it, even if he's on his phone or a computer, it should... It'll probably like quickly install Teams if he doesn't have Teams installed. Which takes like yeah. a minute or two. And then he doesn't have to have a count or anything. It should just go boop to us. Okay, cool. So we'll see him, him. We'll see him in a minute. I have a, I have a different question because that was a fan question. Scott. So what? why Smite instead of League of Legends? <laughs> uh, I tried League of Legends and I just couldn't do the whole like how far it is from the character. Because okay. in Smite, we're like right behind them. But like in League of Legends, it's like you're in, you're playing an ant. And I, can, I just can't. <laughs> yeah. For sure. No, I, I, I totally understand. What's... Yeah, I also like Greek mythology a lot, which is kind of... Maybe that's like one of my weird hobbies, Greek mythology. I like gods in general. Just like the idea of them. Oh, there he is. Yeah, well, yeah. That late ass. There he goes. There he is. There he goes. What's up, Max? How we doing, <laughs> sir? I don't know if Hello? You, can you hear us? Can you see us? We should be golden now. Can you hear us, Max? I don't think he can hear us. <laughs> Yo, can you guys hear me? I, I can't hear you. Check, check, check. Do you have the volume up? <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. that's probably what it is the headphones check 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 
Ah. I just gotta plug it in. Good old Max fashion. <laughs> it's a suspense. <laughs> Microphone check. One, two, one, two. Yeah, I can't hear you. Check one, check uh -huh. one, check, check. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what. While we're fixing the technical difficulties, but Max is here, Albert's here. Please support Violent New Breed. Let's jam Ruination, Ruination while we're waiting. Okay. Please support him. Hit the follow button. You can't get it? Maybe call him real quick. I don't know. See if you guys can do the... So it should be in... So what happens, what the usual issue is, is most people, everyone uses Teams. And we, I'm sorry, we use a Zoom. And we think what it is, is Zoom is taking over the like camera or headphone out or speaker out or microphone. We've heard it all. And sometimes yeah. if they go into their settings and like swap things, it'll like fix it. But... Okay. You can hear us now? Hello? I yes, got you now, boy. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen! Max Green in the building! Give me a hell yeah! Ow! All right. Welcome, brother. We appreciate you joining, dude. No worries uh, on the technical difficulty. It's not a big deal at all. How are you, sir? How has your day been? <laughs> uh, it's been great, man. Uh, it's a good day. Um, I was hanging out with my dog, cleaning up the house, working on some music. Uh, my wife came home today. And now, probably the best part of my day is I'm out here hanging out with you, talking about what my day's been. Hell yeah, I I love the energy too. This is awesome, awesome. We were we were hanging out with Al for about for about ten minutes prior to this. He told me about how you guys met, how he won the contest. Uh, that kind of the, essentially that he saw on Facebook how all that came about, and then coincidentally, you guys had linked up and known a bunch of the same homies, which is really really cool. How did you know Albert was the one? Um, so there was, uh, we were, I was actually surprised about the response that we, that we had gotten from people. Um, because I feel like it was like a tall order. Like we literally asked people, we we're like, Hey, we're going to send you this, this instrumental song and we want you to write lyrics, sing, record yourself and a video of yourself as well and send it back to us. So I was like, not many people are going to do this just because that's like a really like vulnerable thing to do. Um, but we got a lot of people and I don't know. I think it's one of those things where it's like, dude, just right off the rip. It's like one, like probably most importantly, it was like he, had, he wrote a great melody. Like he was fast. Like we sent him the song. He sent it back like within 24 hours and he had a sick melody down. He had vocal parts worked out he had like screams worked out and i was like wow like all the placement is like is great and i think on that song like we kept i think we pretty much kept like how you wrote the demo version and just <laughs> made that the made that the final version yep hell yeah, yeah. that is awesome it just, yeah it was one of those things where it was like i don't know man like how sometimes bands talk about like that magic or that chemistry is one of those things where it's like this fits like this is it like right here so you, you just knew hell yeah what's your what's your dog's name uh river river what's that river hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. max yeah. i want to bounce around a couple of different questions to you i had asked albert the same question but uh your mantra might be a little bit different uh i see the little bobblehead river bobblehead that's cool <laughs> yeah. uh what what are what are the goals for for violent new breed for for the remainder of 2023 uh, he said you have inker ink incarceration is that how you say it coming up soon yeah, incarceration. Incarceration. Yeah. I say it wrong yep. every time. So yeah, we've got in wow, incarceration fest coming up. Um, dude, it's it's been crazy. Twenty twenty three has been kind of wild because when we got off tour with ETF and Red Jumpsuit, like we were all fucking stoked. We were all coming off this fucking tour high, like you know, just killing it out there, and it was it was really successful. We ran into some fucking things. We had to, um, you know dealing with money and paying people back for loans. And then we had to find a, a new drummer. Um, so then we went to the studio and worked on new music or the, the guys did. Um, so 2023 has been like, like a, a big game of like hurry up and wait. Um, but I would say like the goals to finish out this year is tour on our way out to incarceration fest tour on our way back, 
lock down a deal with management, which we've been talking to, and lock down a deal with a label, which we've kind of been talking to as well. Is it is it weird touring again with ETF? Or or what was it, like what 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 did that feel like? Um dude, no, you know, I was um Honestly, man, there was there was a lot of emotions that went into it to like to be like completely real with you for a minute. Um, you know, I hadn't really seen them in years, um, and the last my last interaction with them was was really fucked up. Like they had me come back to the band, and we properly like the, the band was like just everything was a mess like on the business end, and I was like, wow, holy shit, like. You know, when I left, everything was tight. Now I come back and everything's just fucking crazy. Um, and then we, so we finished that tour and then I was hanging out with Ronnie and uh, he asked me to join Falling in Reverse. And so I said, well, I've got to do this last ETF tour and it didn't line up. So he had me join hit or I joined his band because, um, well, one, they could guarantee a paycheck and guarantee steady work, steady tour. When I was with ETF, I was just kind of – it was just kind of like a tour-by-tour tour basis, me coming back. And uh, so they found out that I had left the band through AP Magazine posting an article saying that I had quit. And wow. it's fucked up because they weren't supposed to post it until like, until like the end of the month. But they went ahead and ran the story early. So – the band found out through AP Magazine before I even had a chance to call them and tell them like, hey man, like I got another offer, like I'm gonna go do this instead. Um, so I hadn't seen them since then. Um, so coming onto this tour and touring with them, seeing them for the first time in a long time, having like, you know, this new this new lineup, this new band that finally feels right, it's finally good enough to get off the ground. Like I was stressed, there was a lot of pressure. Um, but it was really therapeutic. And I think like as much for me, like it, it was for them as well. Um, the first, the first three songs every single night, this is a true story. I would go and I would find a dark corner of the room and I would, I would sit down and I would let myself cry for the first three songs of the ETF set. Just because I'm like, damn, like that's, that's like when they're playing these songs, I'm like, that's my soul up there. Like that, that's mm -hmm. my, I remember those moments in the studio. I remember the moments, you know, writing this or in the van and, you know, when this was just a riff. Um, so like I let myself do that. And then, you know, I went up for my little cameo and then it was, you know, all hugs and good times and laughs after that. And, uh, and it was great, man. Honestly, it was, it was really cool. It was probably that was probably one of the best tours I've ever had with them was not even being in the band. Like it was so good. And also having them be able to look at me and my guys and know that like, that like I've got a band of talented dudes like backing me up. They're looking at me and they're watching me on stage every night with my band. They're watching my band going like, wow, like he's got a good band. Like, you know, that was a good feeling as well. Hell yeah. I love how you like opened up and and give us real insight into that emotion. That was cool of you. Uh, oh Ma yeah, Max. I don't think you've got a chance to meet my co-host today. His name's JB. He goes by JB Music. We were actually at the uh, the Whiskey a Go Go show for that tour with ETF. Uh, I was telling oh. Al, you guys killed it. JB, do you have a question for Max or Albert? You know what? Um, it's just it's crazy to me that you know you have so many different projects and it's very um inspiring to me because i'm on my first music project at the moment and um with that being said i guess this is a question open to both of y'all uh when it comes to you guys' music uh, and you guys try to you know expand and try to be create um creative and something different um how do you go about that you know how do how is you know even like you know auditioning for a new band or you know having a new band that you have to go you know, on tour with uh, your old band. Like how, how do you find that new creative, creative like juices? Um, man, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like it's not like, it's not something like, 
there's not like a, uh, I feel like there's not like in like a cut and dry answer, like, oh, you have to do this. I feel like it's for me personally, it was a process. When I first started, when I first got the idea of, oh, I'm going to do another band or I'm going to do another project, like I knew it was going to be a journey. And when I first started writing, the feedback I got from everyone was, oh, it sounds like Escape the Fate. It sounds like Escape the Fate. It sounds like Escape the Fate. And it was like, okay, well, like, yeah, I get it. That makes sense because, like, I can't, you know, that was my band for the last, you know, 15 years or whatever. Um, but this is something new. This isn't Escape the Fate. And so it was like, a, it was like a, it was like a journey of kind of like, um, reigniting some like self-discovery and you know ideas and things that might have been shot down before I was able to go back and like revisit and reinvent them and I feel like taking the opportunity to really look at yourself and wipe the slate clean and reinvent yourself um is something that played like a big role in that as well but and I feel like the, and I feel like the thing is, is like a lot of people really don't have the guts or the strength to even be vulnerable enough to put themselves out there like that. So that's why like a lot of people, it, it's tough for a lot of people. Max, did you bring hot sauce? I know Albert did. I'll just I bring hot sauce. Oh, That'll no. work. That'll work. <laughs> let's do a little trivia. Let's lighten the mood. Have some fun. Uh, what if you guys could agree on a movie or TV show? that you've seen the most, where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. In my opinion, it's easier to pick a movie because there's one movie versus five seasons of a TV show. I could pick any episode, whatever. Could you Could you guys agree on one or the other? I don't know what, I don't know what movies you watch. I know the only shows we've ever discussed are like, uh, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race and uh, Shit's <laughs> Creek. Yeah, I almost yeah. I spit my beer around right now because I was not <laughs> expecting that. RuPaul's Drag Race. What was the second uh, one? Shit's uh, Creek. Yeah, a show called Shit's Creek. Mm. That I probably I can know. find. You like uh, horror movies, right? Um, yeah, I like horror movies. I like eighties movies. Uh, See, I was born in the nineties, though. Come on. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Yeah, it's like, I'm, so what I'm about a, a 90s horror movie that you've seen a bunch? Albert, I'm gonna I'm let you just take the reins, man. You you do you 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 take control of this one, man. He's and trusting fucking, you. He's trusting. Yeah. You. Oh crap. Um. Can we just do like um? I've seen the movie Dawn of the Dead probably like 50 times. The, the like 90s one? The remake. No, yeah, like the is remake. That the, is that the like one where the little thousands. girl runs in in the beginning into the bedroom? Yeah. Okay, okay, yep. okay. All right, give me a second really on on so. on that. Um, Shit. So, Max, <laughs> I, had, I had asked Albert the same question, but how would how does a traditional V&B song start from scratch? He said sometimes Garrett comes up with the skeleton, sometimes you do, but do you just, just kind of come up with a riff and then it go it grows from there do you vibe off something that someone has sent you how does a song start so um when i first met garrett um i was like damn dude like this dude's a fucking great guitar player blah blah blah. like i want to do something with him and we i had gone to hang out with him a couple times um and he was just showing me little riffs on his computer laptop whatever i'm like what is that that's sick what is that that's sick and uh, he would have all this great stuff like laid out like in a in a so in a song or like in a song <laughs> like it was just like a bunch of cool parts and I was like he need he just needed like a little bit of direction like I always call it like trimming the fat because that's that's one thing that my one of my first producers had said to me and um, so yeah Garrett would have like an idea or something and I would kind of help just kind of structure him or like, you know, ask questions along the way of like, okay, well, like, what do you feel right here? Like, what does this part make you feel? Like, I feel like we should build anticipation here. Like, let's make this, you know, we need to make it feel like uh, this, this is a stressful moment for the big, 
you know, for the for the big chorus to come in and a big like, or, you know, just something to push you right over the top so that you're really pissed off here. And uh, Garrett's really good at, um, at the weird way that I talk about songwriting because I, sometimes I'll be like, imagine yourself like on a fucking highway, dude, and you're, <laughs> and, you're on your, and you're on your Harley and a fucking bunch of cops are chasing you, dude, and there's dust blowing on the wind and there's fire in the background. I'm like, that's what I want. That's the kind of part I want. Put that into music and he'll just do it. <laughs> oh, he's not lying. Yeah, that's how he describes music. Half the time I'm like, I don't know what you want from me. But Garrett, <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. That is <laughs> awesome. We sent shit to Albert, and um, I've always told Albert, I'm like, yeah, man, you know, I wrote a lot of lyrics and like ETF, so if you ever need any help, you know, blah, 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 I can I can do this or that. And like literally every time he sends something, I'm like, no, that's great. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's just, that's cool. Right on. I'm like, fucking like next song. <laughs> well, let's see if we can stump Albert right now in a little Down on the Dead trivia. I'm, Are you ready, sir? I'm, no, but yeah. <laughs> Here we go. In Dawn of the Dead, the remake, 2004. As Anna is fleeing her community, what yeah. kind of vehicle is she driving? What is the make and model? It's silver. But silver what? I don't know the car. Can you, can you get, randomly guess the brand? Toyota Corolla. That is 100%! Yeah, hell yeah! Oh! That is correct. Damn it, JB. We have to do the hot sauce and whatever this lands on. Damn it. I got some ghost pepper too. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I have so I have mustard and a fruity pebble cereal bar. Cereal bar. <laughs> Not only am I going to take a swig of hot sauce, I'm going to combine this and somehow try to keep it together and continue this interview. It ain't going to be easy, boys, but I'm going to do my best. Um, that's why we respect you. Yep, that's why we're here. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Uh, with after after you said the tour and then the festival and then the tour back. Uh, is it, are we going back in the studio after that or are you writing? Do you guys write when you're on the road in, in the van or how does, what, what happens on a, on an average tour day, I guess I'll say. Dude, I would say that like the, the, the band is still so new and fresh. Like the idea has been around for a minute. The name has been around for a minute, but even from like COVID and everything else, like once this lineup got put together, everything just started going and it was just like, yo, we need to make this happen. We need to make this happen. So that the, the first tour we did was really just kind of everyone getting used to tour life, like living in a van and shit like that and not, not sleeping or sleeping on a bench or, you know, Hey, trade me spots. I've been driving for this long. Can you drive? Like who's next? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. But Garrett would often have his guitar, especially like kind of after like he settled into things, have his guitar, you know, walk around the venue and playing around and shit like that and uh, coming up with ideas and things. It's I do remember on tour, Garrett has this weird thing. I don't know if it's like a thing guitarists do, but he could just like write it in his head and then yeah. like play it. And then I was like, what are you doing? That's ridiculous. Yeah. He is kind of weird like that, where he'll be like, oh, I came up with this riff. I'm like, oh, let me hear He's like, no, it's in my head. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's like sight reading, but automation. Yeah, that's yep. crazy. Yeah, that was terrible. That was, <laughs> I don't recommend that. That was awful. He's dying. Mouse on fire and then nasty mustard and the fruity pebbles, Ugh. which doesn't really work together. Oof. Ugh. Uh, Disgusting. Max, when you in your in your short stint back with with Ronnie in Falling in Reverse, did you did you help write any of the records or any any particular tracks for them, or was it just for live shows? Um. So when I had joined the band, we were the band was in, currently in the studio tracking um, 
for the album. I think it's like, what's the name of the album? I think it's called like Just Like You or some shit. It's got like the girl on the cover with like the belt buckle. Okay. Um, yeah, the, well, they were tracking that album and um, I was still like a little unaware of like everyone's role in the band. Like I knew that like on stage, like it was like the Ronnie Radke show, but I didn't know if the band members had a hand in writing, if they hired writers or if it was just Ronnie and producers, I was, I didn't really know what was, what was up. Um, so I was in the studio with him one day and I remember I came up with, I had this idea for just like a, a simple thing for the bass to do, just kind of like walk up a little bit to like the octave and I fucking said my idea and the engineer that was working just like turned around real quick and shot me this look of like, what the fuck do you think you're doing right now? And I was like, Oh, I was like, are we not, do we not do this? I'm like, I I figured like there's the band is here. We're in the studio. Like, I don't know. Um, but, um, so yeah, no, nah, there was a, a couple times like Ronnie had come out in the living room and been like, Oh, what do you think of this line, you know, for lyrics or whatever. And, um, but like nothing pretty much like now nah, he just writes with his producers. For sure. Yeah. Uh, we've got time just for a couple more, but, uh, JB, what would be, uh, a final question or two that you might have for, for the fellas. So uh, with what you guys were saying, you, you guys are still looking for management and uh, still looking for a label to sign to. Um, how are you guys finding your tours and everything that like that? Is it just like personal connection or, or is it, has it been like luck? How's that been for y'all? Pretty much. I mean, like we are, Albert and I pretty much will just, we'll be in the group chat and he'll be like, Hey, I know this person from this company in Arizona. Like, should I hit him up? Be like, yes. And so we just try to do that and use like our personal connections with people that we've met through the years to try to connect the dots to make something happen. But like recently we felt like we've come to a point where we've reached that we've reached like a wall where, there's only so much that we could get done, like using the, like, just to be fucking real, like, you know, using fucking, oh, Max Green from Escape the Fate, um, where it's like, okay, like, now, like, we need a fucking manager. Or Albert being like, people knowing Albert in his local scene and being like, oh, fucking Albert, was not that guy from that one band, that singer? Yeah, okay, cool, yeah, let's do this. But like, now, yeah, we, we've reached a point where we need, someone with a little more fucking weight to like swing around to make these calls for us to, you know, send these emails to get responses back because at at a certain level, like if you're, people just don't talk to, they don't talk to people in bands, like the managers, the, the labels, this and that it's shitty to say, but we are the lowest person on the totem pole. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I I get what you mean when you say you, you think you've hit the wall and then, this next step is needed to get to the next level. That totally makes sense. Um, fine. I have two final questions. Do you guys have a, Hey mama, I made it moment. And if so, can you, can you tell us that moment? And then the second question is, uh, what, what mistake do you see most local bands make that you wish they would stop making in order to achieve success a little bit faster? Albert, you want to go first on this one? Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't really think I've had the mom I've made it moment yet. Like in my in my box checking, I ha- I don't think I've done it yet. But there is been moment there has been moments where like joining this band, I'm like, oh shit, like maybe I could do this for the rest of my life. And then us playing the Escape the Fate tour. <clears throat> I I have a photo with uh with Craig when they played Arizona. They played the marquee with Moshe and White and all that. So I never thought I would be in a band with people that I looked up to growing up so that's crazy so that's kind of like my mom hey look I made it but I don't really I don't think it'll happen when I'm in front of a crowd of people and they're all singing all my lyrics that's when I'll know yeah I mean. hey. what about a, advice Albert that you would have for for a local band in the scene um 
Well, probably being the one that's been in the like the local band most recently out of the everyone in our band, I think it's uh people tend to not pay attention to the graphics they're putting out, and it presents very very unprofessionally, and people tend to discount you for that. Coming from a like, graphic from designer, I, I, I see you. Yeah, <laughs> photos, anything like that. Personally, yeah, I see something, I'm like, that's fucking ugly. I'm not listening to your music, which is kind of fucked up, but. Still, no, it's great advice. You gotta graphics are just as important oh. as the producer and the writing. Yeah. What, what do you got? And just release your music. A lot of bands just hold on to shit and don't do anything because they think that it has to be done right. Just release it. Like, you can't do anything if you don't have music. Fair enough. I like it. Yeah. What you got, yeah. Max? Um, I would say my fucking hey mom, I made it moment. Um would have been, I would say, so probably, um, I mean, I know that it's like a real, probably like the, I feel like there's like a couple, cause like the first one I had was when I had signed my first record deal. Um, cause Ronnie and I had went to the same high school together we were in local bands together, and Robert Ortiz. We were all we all went to the same school, and uh, we all used to practice in Robert's garage right down the street from my house. Um, and I remember when we, you know, for a while Ronnie used to live with me. My mom, he, he dropped out of high school, and I was like, "Yeah, man, come live with me." I had like known him for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking, but we always talked about like, you know, we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it. That's all we did was fucking music 24 seven. Um, so I would say signing my first deal, signing my deal with Epitaph was like a, like, Hey, like this is a real thing. Like I can really do this. I can make this a career. Um, and then probably when we were able to afford a bus, I feel like that is a, when I gave my mom the first tour of the first bus that I had ever been on where it was like legitimately paid by the work and the efforts of myself and my coworkers, like my band at the time, like just us, like not buying under another tour, not splitting with another band, not a label paying for it because it's on this tour sponsored by so-and-so, but like a legitimate, like, Hey, like I made it like, this is a bus. Like we're on a bus. We're traveling. Cause like, that's like the big thing. I feel like when you're growing up, it's like, Oh man, like, we were ever in a bus one day like holy shit you know everyone dreams about being on a bus um and then advice for local bands i would say honestly i i was gonna i was gonna say what albert said is that uh just put shit out man put it out put it out put it out um you know and but the thing is is i'm even noticing that i have to do is there is so much more stuff that you have to learn and be able to do nowadays to be able to make it like it's so different from when I from when I started it was like we just needed to play in a garage and choreograph a live show and just like play our asses off like that's what we had to do and nowadays it's like you need to fucking learn graphic design. You need to learn how to do music videos on your phone. You need to learn how to fucking code. You need to have to, you know, learn how to do all this stuff for your band that has nothing to do with music, like essentially. And it's crazy. Um, but I feel like a lot of bands will get like caught up and stuck in certain things. And like at the end of the day, What's gonna, what's really gonna speak for itself is the music. Like, put the shit out. You know what I mean? You don't want to become stagnant. You don't want to get too caught up in other shit. Constantly be releasing at least a single or something every couple of months just to stay relevant. It's, it's a good rule of thumb, yeah. At least like one every three months. At least. Get him, River. Get him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, fellas, we, we're out of time, but gentlemen, this is an absolute pleasure. I appreciate you so much. I'm pissed that I couldn't stump you, Al. Well done. I had to, unfortunately, eat some really nasty shit. But, uh, <laughs> gentlemen, this is a lot. Of, I wish you nothing but success. Hopefully, in the near future, uh, you guys are, are gigging around my way again in Southern California, and I'll come out and support any way I possibly can. Gentlemen, have a fantastic day. Stay safe on the road. Violet Ubrey! Yeah, hell yeah! Thank you, gentlemen. 
Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too.